What's up team? Sean for Vesta Live here. And today we are going to talk about ontology. What does it mean? Why is it important? How to think about it in terms of data and AI. This is a word that's getting thrown around nonstop on YouTube, on social media, on Twitter. And I think a lot of people don't really understand what it is, why it's important, what it even really means. It's a, it's, it's a buzzword that shouldn't actually be a buzzword. It's a real thing. It's very important. Let's waste no time. I'm going to get right into this, and we're just going to talk about it. We're not going to do any any uh, fluff here, okay? So I want you to think in terms of data science and artificial intelligence and how we're talking about ontology for this example, okay? So ontology is a structured model. It defines the relationships and categories among a set of concepts within a specific domain. I'm going to explain more. It provides a shared and common understanding of a domain that can be communicu communicated between people and systems. What this is saying is, when I understand it here, I understand it here, I understand it here, I understand it here. It's normalized, it's explainable, it has history and connection. I understand how, they're, how they work together across different use cases or what we're gonna call domains. So in a more detailed explanation of what this means, is that there's essentially three key components that we're talking about. We have concepts. Concepts are the building blocks of ontology. They represent real world entities, right? So think about an object, a place, a person, an event, okay? So a concept is a real world entity. And each concept has a set of attributes that describe it. I have a blue four door pickup truck with four wheels, uh, a lift gate, a uh, steering wheel and a radio, right? I have uh, a coffee that has ice in it in a cup with a blue straw, right? Those are the attributes. Now, attributes could be anything, taste, flavor, smell, description, whatever, but just keep that in mind in terms of concepts. Then we have relations. These are the links that connect concepts together. So as an example, in a medical ontology, because that's really going to be the focus, the concept of disease could be connected to the concept symptom, right? Through a relation using code that looks something like has underscore symptom, right? True or false, yes or no. To what degree is that symptom showing itself, right? We have concepts, we have relations. <clears throat> Next, we have hierarchy. Hierarchy is the concept that's in how we arrange things in a hierarchical fashion, right? How they tie together and tier together. So what this means is that some concepts are more general when others can be very specific. I might have just said it's a blue pickup truck, but maybe it's a bright blue Ford F-150 from a certain year with a certain package associated with it, right? So as an, exa as an example, sticking with sort of medical terminology, right? A mammal would, would be very general and a conceptual specific might be a dog or a cat or a species of dog or cat with a color and a size, right? Just think in terms of, you know, up and down sort of that hierarchy, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the reason this is so important for AI is because it has a critical role to play due to the variety of data descriptions and the way that we can process this in a meaningful way. So a couple of key components to pull up from ontology, and again, this is pretty simple stuff, but basically what we're looking at is knowledge representation and reasoning, representation and reasoning of our knowledge, right? Ontologies allow these different systems to understand and reason about the world by modeling it in such a way that's understandable by both humans and machines. Now let's pause for a second. This is really important because when we ask a question to an AI tool, we want it to be represented back to us in a way that we both understand what it means and can take some action from it. Otherwise, it's just information and data for the sake of it, and that doesn't do us any good. And at the same time, we have to recognize the fact that we can't talk to a computer exactly like a human unless we understand how it has to be um, modeled on the computer end, right? So it's important we have that. So to sum it up really simple, right? With ontologies, machines can infer new knowledge based on the existing knowledge they have. So think very much like if I see 25 blue balloons go by, I might infer that the next balloon is likely to be blue unless something changes about that. A true computer might say, well, I have no idea what's coming next. It could be any color. It could be anything, right? Starting to have that sort of inferability is what makes it really unique here. The other big piece of this is information extraction and retrieval. This one should be pretty obvious, but I think it's important to know it. Ontologies are used to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of information extraction from text and, and other data retrieval processes, right? There's different ways to do it, but think text for the easiest way to think about it. 
And what it does is it makes search much more contextually relevant. So the key with this is I can type very normal sentences um, into an AI search, for example, and it will bring me back what it really does believe I'm asking so that it can not only extract my question, but retrieve the correct answer based on the way the question was asked or presented to it. Another big piece is data integration, right? So ontologies can be used to integrate data from different sources by providing a common framework of understanding. If you watch this channel or you watch me on other channels, you know I talk about standardization, normalization. This is what it means. We might have lots of different types of data all coming into this one sort of pool, but we need it all to look the same when it gets pushed back out, right? I might ask a question to an MDM, one to a structural database, one to an unstructured database, another question to a data lake. There might be some numbers involved. It could be a true and false involved. I need it to be normalized and standardized so that when it comes back out, all that disparate data is represented as one singular answer that gets extracted. Now, we start to get some pretty cool stuff here, right? So now we're talking about the semantic web, right? And this uses ontologies to enable machines to understand and respond to complex human requests based on the meaning of the request, okay? So this isn't as simple as saying, you know, um, how many cars are currently for sale under $10,000 and less than 40,000 miles, right? That's a pretty direct question. But maybe I also want the tool to understand that <clears throat> as it gets smarter, I'm shopping for a car. And what I'm looking for is a deal on a reliable vehicle. And I want it to also start to understand that, well, maybe something that's slightly out of the parameter or slightly different, or maybe have you thought about doing this can come back as a recommendation also. This is the intelligence starting to come through, all right? The other piece that's actually pretty cool and one that I spend a lot of time working on myself is NLP or natural language processing. So when we think about why ontologies matter, it's because they're crucial for understanding the context in language, right? This is what aids the tasks such as sentiment analysis, text summarization, and machine translation as a few examples. But the reason this is important is that when we speak to each other, human to human, person to person, there's a lot of context in what we're saying, right? Like, you know, I might have a terrible day, I might have a great day, but, you know, a machine can't represent what that really means. When we start to have ontology tied back to nat natural language processing, we can extract the sentiment from that sentence. You know, great is very positive, but there's other ways to think about it. Think about a word like fire. I might say fire and you think hot, dangerous, burn. Other people might hear fire and they think warm, relaxing, um, you know, marshmallows, <laughs> graham crackers, right? We want it to be able to look at the context, not just of a word, but the structure around the word, right? I love sitting at the hot fire on a cold night. Unfortunately, we had to call the insurance company because of a fire in our home. Totally different things that mean, mean totally different outcomes. We want natural language to be able to recognize that. And then finally, the big one here that I kind of have at the end is personalized service. So once again, ontologies can be used to provide personalized service by understanding the user's preference and providing services based on them. This is pretty cool because what this means is in terms of how I perhaps like to run my business or engage with a chatbot or be treated in a medical facility. It can recognize my historical data, how I respond and react to things, my style of language, and be able to respond to me in a way that is going to most likely be comforting for me. It's going to understand the way I ask might be different than someone else, right? It can understand slang over time. It's all about getting to understand the way that you interact with machines so it can become more human-like when it reacts with you, okay? All this is due to ontology, and those first couple of points are called out. So if I was going to put a sort of summary on this, right? Ontologies are important in AI because they provide a structured and shared understanding of a domain. They enable AI systems to understand and reason about the world in a more effective and efficient way with a higher degree of efficacy, right? When I ask a question, I get the right answer, not just an answer. So I was going to stop there, um, but what I thought was this might be really useful if we think about it in terms of an example. So I want to drive into an example of a healthcare AI application. And in this case, we're going to use ontology to understand and classify medical information. So I'm not going to fluff this. It's going to be a little bit technical, but I think it's important if you for to really understand that this is this is actually technical and this is complex. So I'll make it just a bit technical so you can get a taste for it, but I'm not going to bore you with the coding and the details in the back end. So in this healthcare AI app, we're going to use ontology to understand and classify medical information. Sounds 
pretty good. Actually, sounds like an app I might want to build or maybe you want to build, right? So let's think about this. We have the following concepts in our ontology. And if you don't remember a concept, right, these are the building blocks. These represent real world entities, okay? So let's just keep that in mind. So we have the following concepts in our ontology. Maybe we want to look at diseases, right? Some examples might be diabetes, cardiovascular, cancer, et cetera. We want to look at symptoms, you know, um, fever, chest pains, coughing, um, chills, right? We also want to look at and understand treatments, right? This could be medicine, surgery, uh, holistic, uh, massage. It could be anything, right? And then we want to next understand, <laughs> excuse me, the relationship among these concepts and how they would be defined. So this is the part I'm going to get just slightly technical, but I want you to understand the way to think about this in terms of ontology and AI. The first step is to understand that we look at the disease and, you know, it has symptom, right? X, Y, Z, one, two, three, whatever it is. And then we might actually say, okay, that symptom is, you know, cancer has the symptom of a cough, right? We're connecting a cough to a cancer. Another way to think about it is then from the treatment perspective, right? Disease has treatment treatment. So for example, cancer's treatment is radiation. So we recognize that there's a cough. We find out that it led to cancer. We then treat, have a treatment, which is going to be radiation. We want, this is a rough way to explain it because I want to try to make it really simple when it's not super simple. So it's understanding the symptoms that identify the disease that then pursue the proper treatment, right? And with time, it'll get tighter and better at recognizing, understanding the nuances. Then you can build those hierarchies within those concepts, right? not just cancer, but all the different types, not just the types, but then the different causes. Then we can start to get proactive as opposed to just reactive and talking about medicine. This is why ontology is really cool. So I'm going to sum this up again, right? In the example of um, symptoms, diseases, and treatments, you know, we're thinking about an AI system that can understand the relationship between <laughs> all the different types of diseases, their symptoms, and the potential treatments for those diseases. Uh, the ontology can be used in different ways, right? So maybe a, it's, it has a user that comes in. I walk into a doctor's office. I say, hey, listen, I've got a fever. My nose is stuffy. I have a cough, a little bit of chest soreness, right? Now, the AI will take those in and say, hmm, it sounds like those symptoms most likely are to be this based on the other information it knows about me as the patient, right? Or on the other hand, perhaps I'm already diagnosed with something and we want to try something different. Perhaps can look at different possible treatments and their efficacy and efficiency in solving for that problem. Now, this is a surface level example, but I want I wanted to use the idea of medical and treatments and symptoms because there are so many unlimited examples, right? A cough could be indicative of thousands of potential problems. It could be allergies, it could be lung cancer. So we want to know more and more and <clears throat> follow that hierarchy as I cough naturally, right? We want to follow that hierarchy to understand. What more can we learn? What other symptoms? How are those symptoms happening? Where do they come from? When did they start, right? This is very hard to do if you are a human doctor who might be brilliant and very good at your job, but at some point, you can't know everything about symptoms, every disease, and every treatment. This is where ontology comes in to really help big time. So another reason why this is important is you start to think to yourself, okay, cool, but sometimes the problem is a lot of this information can live in different places. And, you know, um, PII information, personally identifiable identification is private. There's HIPAA information, there's different databases, there's data lakes, right? Like we talked about earlier. So one other usage point for this could be integrating all the various databases related to this problem, right? And have that be a super secure database that has everything collected in it. So we're not having to reach out constantly and pull in information based on questions we're asking. So it also could potentially provide some degree of privacy into one sort of collective database of all the relevant information we might need to answer these questions. So team, that was sort of a really brief concept that I could have, you know, realistically talked about five hours on ontology, but I want to read it back to you one time and end you with the summary, right? In the context of data science and artificial intelligence, ontology is the structured model that defines the relationship and categories among a set of concepts within a specific domain. Right? It provides a shared and common understanding of a domain that can be communicated between people and systems. So the easiest way to think about this is how do we get machines to tell us answers based on knowing everything, not only about the data, but how we as individuals will act also. That's the goal, the story, the reason for ontology. I hope this was helpful. If you have really complex 
AI, data science, ontology questions, let me know. My goal is to try to provide the answers in a really simplified way without taking five hours to do it or showing you a thousand slides. So with that team, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, good luck out there. Thanks everybody.